All right, so we're resolving forces into their components in this video. Um, basically, if there's a force here pulling on some sort of angle, uh, there's going to be a force pushing across ways, and there's going to be a force pushing upwards as well. Um, so there's an X component and a Y component, or an I component and a J component uh, to that diagonal force. So read the question, and then I'm going to draw a picture of that question. You should probably pause it and try drawing the picture yourself before I do. So it's picture, picture drawing time. Here's some water um, and a boat. Here's my boat. Uh, now, a person over here, they're skiing on the water, and it says that the rope makes an angle of five degrees to the horizontal. So here's like my toe uh, pole. Here's my rope, oops, which is meeting the tow pole. Okay, there you go. And here's my angle of five degrees. So the rope is making an angle of five degrees with the water. 6,000 newtons is being exerted on the skier along that line. Calculate the horizontal and vertical components of the force exerted on the skier. You can see at its heart, this is just a a trigonometry question. Notes to take here. Total force, so this is our 6,000 newtons, the total force is going to be equal to the force in the x-axis plus the force in the y-axis. So force equals fx plus fy. Now we can say that that's equal to the magnitude in the y-axis plus the magnitude in the j-axis. Now if you do your little bit of trigonometry, what you can say is that the force in the x-axis is equal to the force, the total force along your hypotenuse, cos theta. And you can say that the force in the y-axis is equal to your total force or along your hypotenuse, sine theta, where theta is measured in F and I. Okay, so important notes here to take um, important to note these two relationships here. Uh, so that is that, and this is this. Uh, but in the end, it's it's trigonometry at its heart, but we just need to understand that it's also vectors. So now that you know that, it's it's very very straightforward from here. Here's another probably neater diagram of my little skier here. And you can see here that the tension in the horizontal is equal to the total force cos theta, so 5977 newtons. And that makes sense, 6,000 newtons. Most of that power is being used to pull the skier along horizontally. But a little bit of that power, um, tension sine theta, so 6,000 newtons sine theta is 523 newtons. That's being used to pull the skier up. It's lifting the skier up a little bit. So 523 newtons in the upwards direction, 5,977 newtons in the horizontal direction. Um, so what have we done here? We're resolving forces into their components. We're saying, here's a force in a diagonal. Here's a force, that same force can be broken up into a horizontal force and a vertical force. The second little bit, this question in blue says, if the skier is moving with constant velocity, calculate the size of the horizontal resistance forces on the skier. So if you're skiing along water, the water is providing some sort of resistance like friction. Um, so how much is that? It comes down to this idea here, this constant velocity. Uh, now, if he's moving at a constant velocity, there must be some resistance force that's equal and opposing to that force that it's, that's um, being applied against the skier. We discussed that when we were drawing these force diagrams, and we said if this car is moving at a uniform speed, um, its applied force is equal to its drag or resistance, which is sort of counterintuitive but it boils down to Newton's first law. First law basically boils down to objects like to continue doing what they're doing. So if an object is staying still, it will continue staying still until acted on by a force. 
Similarly, if an object is moving, it will keep moving at the same velocity until something happens to it, um, friction or something else, or a wall gets in front of it and stops it. You can write all of that down, but objects like doing what they're doing. So if the gear is moving with a constant velocity, calculate the size of the horizontal resistance. Well, if there's uh, uh, 5,977 newtons in the horizontal, then we can say that there's resistance of 5,997 in the horizontal as well, because he's traveling at a constant force. So that arrow, that thrust in the horizontal is going to be equal to that friction in the horizontal. So it's as, it's as straightforward as that.